Hi everybody, this is MSM. Hope you're okay. I know I haven't made a video in about three months. Um, sorry about that. Uh, my situation has changed a bit since the summer. Uh, I would like to catch up with you today and you know explain the you know the different things that have been happening with me lately. And yeah, I'm going to try and keep it short, although I know that I'm really terrible at this. So uh, you know that. Um, Ever since last year in December, I stopped taking a treatment for my MS and hadn't had any serious symptoms so far. And this summer, I decided to uh, go for a short stay with some family members who live about three or four hours drive from my house. And uh, I was on my own driving there and I did some paint work for them. And um, I also took the opportunity to go see a friend I hadn't seen in a long time. I had to drive. It was only a few days, but then uh, I think I tired myself quite a bit. And I ended up having uh, some pins and needles in my left hand when I came back. So that was in early August. And um, because I was a little bit scared about that, I called my neurologist. So we scheduled all these MRIs that I was supposed to have later on, um, I think in October. We scheduled them for early September so they could see if I had anything going on as a result of my stay. And um, it turns out that my spine MRI was fine, but then my brain MRI um, shows a tiny little inflammation. So uh, it meant that I was having a minor flare and it turned out that you know, since then, uh, it's only begin getting worse. Um, I have very strong pins and, need pins and needles in my feet, both of them, all the time. When I wake up, I have pins and needles around my calves, so kind of like a sock, and uh, well, two socks rather. And uh, the pins and needles in my left hand are still there. So um, I'm not sure whether or not it has peaked yet. It seems that it has. What we don't know with MS, um, if you don't know about that, is how long the flare can last. And the only thing that can be done is going to get a corticosteroid injected for three or five days in hospital. And that only actually shortens the, the flare, actually doesn't cure it. Because I didn't have any motricity loss, I decided not to go to the hospital and do this. Uh, although it's been really unpleasant to, you know, it's not very nice to walk around at the moment. I can't really exercise because it's really unpleasant. And um, it's only because uh, of my job that, you know, it doesn't bring that much money that, you know, I decided not to have the corticosteroid done. The reason is um, I find that it's not the case for everyone, by the way. Corticosteroids can make people feel hyper. And for me, uh, the contrary, I have no idea why, but it, uh, some people, you know, get hyperactive when they are injected with that. They can't sleep, they get insomnia and all kinds of things. And I am absolutely exhausted after these type of things. So unless there's a big matricity or vision scare that I'm going through, um, I have decided not to go through with this and wait until the flare is over. I'm not sure if it's the right decision, but, um, you know, to me, I, it's a case of balancing the pros and the cons. I've been told to rest, but the most important thing from this uh, is that because the flare is located in my brain, it's a minor one, but uh, it allowed a more precise diagnosis to be made for me because the trouble was that the doctors did not know until then um, whether I had multiple sclerosis or NMO, which is also called the Vicks disease which is just as serious but is not exactly the same as MS and it affects the optic nerve and the spine. The good news is that I get from this is that I may have a flare going on right now but my diagnosis is more precise now and the, the change is going to make is that uh, I have been offered a treatment for MS so it basically means that I'm not, at least for now, going to have any more immunosuppressants offered. I feel like my body is still shaking off the effects of this. I still don't feel like exercising and uh, it's been bothering me. You know? So the great thing is I'm not going to have immunosuppressants offered as the, the treatment. I'm going to be offered MS specific treatment. There is a bunch of treatments available for MS. Uh, the most common is probably beta interferons. But because um, 
I'm not a specialist yet in these things. I'm going to look them up. Um, I'm going to have an appointment with the nurse to discuss the different treatments available. I know there's a bunch of them and most of them are injectables. Um, I am likely to get injectables. I will do another video about that because this is a whole subject in itself. And the treatments are not yet good at um, curing the long-term effects of a flare. So as I was telling you earlier, uh, what you can do, you know, once you get that is try and prevent it with, you know, the long-term treatment, the everyday treatment, which is what I'm going to have. Normally I might try, I'm not sure whether or not I'll go for it, but that would be, you know, the, as they call it, the background treatment. And so once you have a flare, you can treat it with corticosteroids in hospital or at home, and uh, this will limit the, you know, the, the time that you will have the flare for. And that's it. Uh, the trick is going to be um, going to see that nurse for the potential treatments and maybe going on them. Uh, I'm going to try and get as much information as possible on interference and uh, all the other things um, specific for MS. And um, yeah, I'll keep you posted. In the meantime, um, you guys can leave me a comment. I always, always appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate people's experience, whether you know you you are on interference or any similar medicine, and you think it's working for you, or if you have tried it and you think it didn't do anything. Or the more you know, the better it is. I think. And yeah, um, I'll speak to you soon. Singles.